thank you for coming here to uh, listen to my short presentation. My background is, is slightly different from, from uh, all the uh, presenters that we've heard this afternoon. What we've heard so far is people who are coming from industry and people who are coming from educational training boards and different instruction uh, in industries. I am from the, the private training sector. So what I would like to do is talk a little bit about our background and what we have learned since uh, the private sector started to emerge about four or five years ago uh, on this scene. So the title of my presentation is The Making of a New Construction Worker Skilled and, and Recession Proof. So what am I talking about there? So what I'm talking about is that when a recession comes along, the first people who are sent to the side are those who don't carry qualifications. They can have plenty of experience, but it's the guys that are making you the money, which are normally the, the qualified people who stay on the most. So how do we go about doing that? Well, part of what we're doing, iSkill Training, which is my company is, we're looking at the construction environment that has changed. And what we're saying is that there is now a greater requirement than ever to train up people. And if you're going to train up people, where are you going to get them from? And how are you going to feed them into this pipeline? And if you are going to train them, to what level are you going to train? So who's going to set these standards and who's going to come along, certify them and stand over them? So clearly what's needed is we need qualified staff. So do we grow our own or do we import them? And it's a little bit of both. We need qualified staff because qualified staff, they're more efficient and they're more productive and we're going to look at that shortly. So why should a company invest in staff training? Well, staff training in the construction sector can come from two areas. The company themselves can decide to train people, and that's private investment, or they can go the route of the public sector, and there's many fine bodies out there, such as the IOTs, and, and we've heard earlier speakers, and the educational training boards. So there are ways out there to produce your own construction worker. right? If we can get qualified staff in the construction industry, we'll find that they're more productive and they're more efficient. Why? Because they've been taught the proper way to do things. They're not learning by their mistakes. There's a great saying out there about what is the best handling car, right? So if you want a rally car, what type of car do you think it is? Have we any suggestions? Who's a car driver? Come on guys, you're looking up now. Give me a good car. And I'll tell you what the best type of car is. The best type of car is a rental. So why is a rental the best type of car? Because you get to give it back after you've made your mistakes. And there's quite a number of, of uh, sites that have put these uh, learners out there. Uh, sorry, a, a number of these training courses who, who have produced these qualified learners. At the moment, Mount Lucas is starting to take in youth reach uh, and they're starting to run courses designed to prepare 16 to 23 year olds we're moving on to general operative courses, and that's proving to be uh, very successful. I'm also aware that there are a number of other educational training boards around the country who are also looking at this whole area of construction. So there is clearly a shortage of, of qualified staff at the moment, but the educational training boards, indeed the entire educational establishment in Ireland, uh, is gearing up to produce uh, construction workers. So, um, have I got anything there that is of interest? I, I like that, when I was looking for the, the little cartoon to put up there quickly at the end, I decided there's the one thing that builders are famous for, which is uh, builder number three on his, his jeans. So, if anybody has any questions or would like to ask me anything about that, then I'd uh, be happy to, to uh, fire away with an answer. So just where, where did iSkill come from? In the first place, what, what iSkill did was we're a private training company. So we moved into the gap that was created when the likes of uh, the FOSS, what was FOSS at the time, started to uh, take the training courses that they traditionally ran in-house and they started uh, to look at their requirement and they said, there are people who require training, but contracted training might handle it more efficiently and more effectively. So earlier on today, we heard Damien Trainer of Erigal Contracts talking about running the Erigal Training Academy. Uh, and he's up in North Monaghan. Uh, and iSkill Training would have an involvement with Damien in, in providing instructors for the uh, academy. Now, Damien has very, very experienced people, but education and instruction 
uh, also brings its own requirements. There, there's a reason why that people get qualified as instructors and trainers. Uh, outside of having a subject matter expertise, there's also the issues of course delivery and uh, course outcomes learner, outcomes learning objectives. There's a whole structure that has to go in to make a, a training course. So we also heard from John Kelly, who's the training manager from uh, Mount Lucas, which is the National Construction Training Centre. And John was explaining how they too are now gone to a contracted training model, uh, where companies such as iScale Training are out there delivering uh, training on their behalf. Because we're, we would be faster to react, and our trainers are, uh, we bring them in from industry. Whereas when we go back to the traditional way of training, excellent as it may be, sometimes you just need to have the cutting edge of somebody who's come off a site. Uh, so I think that's pretty much what I'd like to cover with you. Just introduce you to what iSkill Training are doing and how we're doing it and where we fit in the bigger mix of training companies. Well, thank you very much indeed.